welcome students to the second session of the chapter 6 life processes in this session i will be taking the content of nutrition nutrition is broadly divided into autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition in this session i will be covering mainly the autotrophic mode of nutrition chapter 6 life processes nutrition all the living organisms need energy to perform various life processes they get this energy from food food is a kind of fuel which provides energy to all the living organisms food is an organic substance the simplest food is glucose also called simple sugar here i will like to tell you the difference between the organic substances and inorganic substances inorganic substances are mostly non living they do not contain carbon exceptions are like, like co2 they should be a simple substances the smaller substances other examples are h2o o2 other minerals nitrates they all are inorganic the organic substances are mainly produced by living things they all compulsory contain carbon the important organic compounds are carbohydrates lipids proteins and nucleic acids a more complex food is starch it is made from glucose the general name of substances like glucose and starch is carbohydrates nutrition is the process of intake of nutrients like the carbohydrates fats proteins minerals vitamins and water by an organism as well as as the utilization of these nutrients by the organism a nutrient can be divided as a substance which an organism obtains from its surroundings and uses it as a source of energy or for the biosynthesis of its body constituents example carbohydrates and fats are the nutrients which are used by the organisms mainly as a source of energy proteins and mineral salts are nutrients used by organisms for the biosynthesis of its body constituents like skin blood etc mode of nutrition mode of nutrition means method of obtaining food by an organism there are mainly two modes of nutrition autotrophic mode of nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition autotrophic mode of nutrition auto means self and trophy means nutrition autotrophic nutrition is that mode of nutrition in which an organism makes or synthesizes its own food from the simple inorganic materials like carbon dioxide and water present in the surroundings with the help of sunlight energy those organisms which can make their own food from carbon dioxide and water are called autotrophs they are also the producers autotrophs make their own food by photosynthesis food is stored in the form of starch in plants the examples are all green plants and autotrophic bacteria all green plants so what are the necessary conditions for the green plant to grow their light intensity color of intensity carbon dioxide temperature chlorophyll water role of color of light during photosynthesis the chlorophyll absorbs blue red and violet light rays green light cannot be absorbed by the plant and thus cannot be used for photosynthesis chlorophyll looks green because it absorbs red and blue light making these colors unavailable to be seen by our eyes necessary conditions for green plants to grow leaves use carbon dioxide and water for manufacturing food in effect higher light intensities make more energy available for plant photosynthesis to take place plant can prepare food as it has chlorophyll molecules in chloroplast autotrophic bacteria blue green algae are actually types of bacteria known as cyanobacteria blue green algal blooms are a major hazard to water supplies as well as potentially dangerous to human animal and fish health you can see this blue green algal bloom in the ponds if you pass through a village you can easily see this if the algal bloom has taken place that means this algal is consuming large amount of oxygen from the pond and if there are fishes and other organisms living inside they can 
die because of the loss of oxygen in the water. Under the microscope, the blue-green algae will look like this. Another topic that I would like to cover up in the autotrophic mode of nutrition is the chemosynthetic bacteria. Some bacteria make their own food by another process which uses chemical energy instead of light energy and this process is called as chemosynthesis. For your extra knowledge, is it possible to live in temperatures over 175 degree Fahrenheit, that is nearly 89 to 90 degrees Celsius? Then yes, if you are a Pompeii worm. The Pompeii worm, the most heat tolerant animal on earth, lives in the deep ocean at superheated hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents means hydro means water and thermal means heat. Large amount of heat, heated water comes out from the vents in the under ocean. Covering this deep sea worm's back is a fleece of bacteria. These microbes contain all the genes necessary for life in extreme environment. Another example is that of tube worms. Tube worms stay deep in the Galapagos Rift and they get energy from chemosynthetic bacteria. They have no mouth, eyes or stomach. Their survival depends on a symbiotic relationship with billions of bacteria that live inside them. These bacteria convert the chemicals that shoot out of the hydrothermal vents into the food for the worms. Chemosynthesis is a process in which some organisms use chemical energy instead of light energy to produce food. Photosynthesis and events in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, the process by which green plants and such other organisms transform light energy into chemical energy. During photosynthesis in green plants, light energy is captured and used to convert water, carbon dioxide, and minerals into oxygen and energy-rich organic compounds. The process of photosynthesis is commonly written as CO2 plus H2O will give C6H12O6 plus O2. The events in photosynthesis. The following events occur during photosynthesis process. First, the absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. Second, conversion of light energy to chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. And third, reduction of carbon dioxide in carbohydrates. So in this process, if I elaborate and say, we can say that sunlight energy is first absorbed by the chlorophyll and it is converted into chemical energy. This chemical energy is useful in splitting of the water molecules. The water molecule splits into hydrogen plus O2. The O2 is released by the plant. These steps need not take place one after the other immediately. For example, the desert plants take up carbon dioxide at night and prepare an intermediate which acted upon the energy absorbed by the chlorophyll during the day. During the day, if the stomatas are open to take in carbon dioxide, large amount of loss of water takes place. So the desert plants tries to keep its stomatas closed during the daytime. So during the night time when the stomatas are open, they will take in carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide during the daytime is used by the plant when they get sunlight energy. Leaf. Now, the leaf has two parts. The blade, this is a completely the blade part. And second is the petiole. The blade is also called as the lamina part of the leaf. It is the main place of photosynthesis. It has got a midrib. These midribs are further divided into veins and these veins are then divided into small netted veins. The petiole is a stem like part of the leaf that joins the blade to the stem. The petiole has tiny tubes that connect with veins in the blades. Cross section of the leaf. Now, this is the structure of the leaf. The leaf has got 
two upper uh, single layered upper and lower epidermis this is an upper epidermal layer and this is a lower epidermal layer it is a single layer this upper epidermis layer has got another waxy part that is called as cuticle if you see the leaf surface the upper surface looks waxy and the lower surface is not waxy so the waxy is because of the cuticle layer the lower epidermis has got guard cells and stomata so the pores the number of stomata are present are in the lower part of the leaf the leaf has got two inner layers they are called as a mesophyll layers these mesophyll layers are called as palisade layer and the spongy layer the chloroplast are these are the chloroplast that can be seen in the palisade layers and even the spongy part layers there are chloroplast you can see now the spongy layer has got the xylem and the phloem they are vascular bundles or we can also say they are conducting tissues so these are the stomata on the lower surface of the leaf they are large in numbers on the lower surface of the leaf if found in the upper surface they are found in very few numbers this is how the stomata open and close the stomata open and close there are guard cells around it uh, around the guard cells there are other epidermal cells that surround it now what is the function of stomata and guard cells specialized cells known as guard cells surround stomata and function to open and close stomatal pores the stomata allows a plant to take in carbon dioxide which is needed for photosynthesis they also help to reduce water loss by closing when conditions are hot or dry how do guard cells open and close the stomata guard cells are able to control how open or closed stomata are by changing shape they are like an inflatable set of doors that make them the opening between the two cells wider or narrower the guard cells change shape depending on the amount of water and potassium ion present in the cells themselves how autotrophs meet their energy requirements autotrophs require energy materials like water and minerals and nitrogen phosphorus iron magnesium water it is used during photosynthesis it is taken by the roots from the soil in the terrestrial plant nitrogen phosphorus iron magnesium is also taken from the soil how is nitrogen taken from the soil plants take nitrogen from the soil by absorption through their roots as amino acids nitrate ions nitrate ions or ammonium ions plants do not get the nitrogen directly from the air nitrogen fixing bacteria are the microorganisms present in the soil or in the plant roots that change nitrogen gases from the atmosphere into solid nitrogen compounds that plant can use in the soil thank you very much see you in the next session